Under Standing Order 3.54, I have allowed Miss Edge to ask an urgent oral question which was circulated to members on Thursday the 12th of November. I call Miss Edge to ask her urgent question. Thank you, Mr President. I'd like to ask the Chief Minister if he will make a statement on the recent COVID-19 positive test results identified through contact tracing. Call on the Chief Minister, Honourable Member for Middle, Mr Quayle, to reply. Thank you, Mr President. Last week, a cluster was identified involving three confirmed positive cases with a clear line of transmission from another case who had travelled to the northwest of England. The close contacts of each case were identified by contact tracing and are now completing their 14-day self-isolation period. Honourable members will know that I cannot confirm details of cases or contacts or provide any other, for, for any other information that may lead to their identification. Each close contact was offered a test for COVID-19. Where a close contact subsequently tests positive for, con for COVID-19, contact tracing is immediately expanded, extended to their close contacts to enable any further transmission to be contained. I am clearly aware that there have been some speculation as to whether this cluster constituted community transmission. There is a danger of being caught up in semantics, as I understand that people will be genuinely concerned that it does. There was locally acquired transmission in so much a close contact of the original case who had travelled back to the island, developed the disease, which was identified Monday evening, and then two of their close contacts also went on to develop the disease, which was identified on Tuesday evening of that week following their test results. Contact tracing was concluded during Wednesday. The position as of today, Tuesday, is that a further positive case was confirmed yesterday evening. This case is a close contact identified last week through contact tracing and has been self-isolating since then. This brings the total to five confirmed cases, including the original case who had travelled from the northwest of England. I would reiterate that the method of transmission is understood in all of these cases. Community transmission relates to circumstances where the source of the transmission is not known, for example, where a case identified in the community and the contract tracing process cannot identify the likely source of transmission. This was not the case here. Whatever the circumstances of the transmission, the Government will always endeavour to keep the public informed within the boundaries of confidentiality that is owed to the people involved. This is whether or not people wish to disclose their own personal circumstances on social media or otherwise. However, this needs to be accurate, factual and not based on assumption. Individual cases and their close contacts will always be spoken with directly by COVID-111 or contact tracing officers at the time of notification, where advice and guidance would be given, however, if necessary. Further advice and guidance is available to individuals and businesses by visiting covid19.gov.im or by contacting Isle of Man Public Health. This does not preclude the ability of businesses in particular to make individual decisions based on their own risk assessment and circumstances. Thank you, Mr President. Supplementary question, Ms Edge. <coughs> Thank you, Mr President. Um, Thank the Chief Minister for being so thorough in his response. Um, I'm just um, concerned, like the Chief Minister stated, that um, contacts have all been traced. Is, can, can the Chief Minister confirm that you're confident that the, the people that have been traced have not been out in the community? Chief Minister. Thank you, uh, Mr President. Obviously, as politicians, we don't get involved in contact tracing, but contact tracing spoke to the initial person and then the people who had developed the um, COVID-19 to see who they had been with, how long they'd been with, how far distance, etc. Those are the normal criteria. They then make the decision who they are going to test. And those people that are close contacts are then forced to isolate for 14 days. Now, I can trust then has to be put in that the people told to isolate follow the rules and 
we don't check them every day. We haven't got the resources. There has always been an element of trust in the people of the Isle of Man. They have not let us down to date. Supplementary question, Mrs Lord Brennan. Thank you, Mr President. <coughs> Does the Chief Minister acknowledge that um, in waiting for contacts to be traced before announcing that there are positive cases, that that might lead to a lag of um, information being, um, being published to do with test results? Um, has this always been the case where you would wait until uh, publishing uh, positive test results? Um, you'd wait for that until contact tracing was completed um, and, and does he think there's a there's a risk in the community because in a small community people do talk um, so is it not better to be more timely with information being put out thank you mr president reply sir thank you mr president i think yes obviously it's important i've always committed to the public to once we know the full story to let them know straight away that's what we do but we are reliant on the officers feeling confident that they have the correct information mr president to go out to the to, to the to the public and sometimes we find out about these cases when it's late at night and therefore it then takes the following day for contact tracing to find out um, where it's come from to find out who are the close contacts and then they have to be contacted so really it is in the hands of, of our officers who deal with, with, with this and, and we have to put our, our trust in, in, in that certainly from a political point of view I'd like to reassure the honourable member that there is no attempt ever <coughs> to delay um, by a day or so the announcement of, of it the minute we know the minute we know the data is, is correct and our colleagues uh, officers assure us that then it, it gets published by a press release we've been pretty quick on that all the time thank you supplementary message Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Chief Minister has put a lot of trust into his contact tracing. Um, can, you, can you confirm? You said that they decided who would be tested. Can you confirm everybody that had been in contact was tested? Because we or have we moved from a test, test, test policy that was in place, which the Health Minister clearly utilised an awful lot at the outset? And can the Chief Minister confirm that we had adequate? resources as in the tests and the chemicals required to be able to carry out the process effectively. Chief Minister to reply. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mr President. <laughs> Whilst you can't tempt fate, the fact that our contact tracing team have enabled us to be, go with over five months without a case uh, and it being in the community, I think they've done a pretty good job, Mr President. The Honourable Member could name countries that um, you know, are in a similar position. They're, they're far and few between, but we can't be complacent. And obviously, I, I, I would hope our officers are, are always doing their best, and, and we have to have a level of, of um, trust. Now, re regarding the actual how the procedure works, the contact tracing team interview the positive case to establish their close contacts from 48 hours prior to the onset of their symptoms or prior to the date of the test for asymptomatic cases. Now, these cases are then risk assessed <coughs> to determine whether they are high or low risk. This assessment is informed by a number of factors, including the length of time, longer than 15 minutes, and distance, less than two metres. Anyone assessed as being high risk is identified, contacted, and required to isolate for 14 days. The contact tracing officers have the ability to offer high risk close contacts, a test, and arrange a swab at the point of interview, or this can be arranged through COVID 111. I don't think anything's changed, Mr. President, from the early days, but obviously the team are learning all the time as we go along and will be no doubt trying to streamline it to make it as efficient as possible. Now, have a number of members wishing supplementary questions, we must not be repetitive. Honourable Member Mr. Morehouse. Thank you, Mr. President. Was the close contact who was referred to, who got the positive test last night, previously identified in the grouping, and did they have an indicative test last week? Chief Minister. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Yes, I think I did give that honourable member my answer that they had been connected with the very first case. They had been tested, and. Um, they've now since developed the case. What I would like to remind honourable member, because this is a key point actually, is that if you are a close contact and you are tested and you come up as negative, then you may have it, but you are not shedding, you are not infectious. If you then go on to develop COVID-19 at a later date when you are in isolation, then you have not been a risk to anyone other than potentially the people that you've isolated with you would not have given the 
virus to people that you mixed with earlier because the test shows that you were not shedding, you, were not, you, you, were, you had a negative result. So I think that's an important point to make. I hope I've explained it clearly. So yes, the person was tested, they came back as negative, they've now developed it, but it's all traced back to the original case. Honourable Member, Mrs Kane. Thank you, Mr President. Um, could I ask the Chief Minister, can he tell us, does he expect there will be any more cases of COVID confirmed as a result of this case? And can he give any reassurance that he is confident there has not been any community spread resulting from this case? Thank you, Mr Chief President. Minister. Thank you, um, Mr. President. I, I can't give any guarantees on, on this sort of thing, Mr. President, other than the fact that we have a very good team in charge of contact tracing, and I, I have every confidence in them. What I, I would like to say is that there may well be further cases as a result of this um, first person by people who are already self-isolating. They're high risk. They may develop it. There is a, a period where they can develop the symptoms. So there are a number of people who have been asked to self-isolate. They may well, um, who knows, go on to develop the um, COVID-19, but they have been tested and they have come back as negative. So when they were in the community, they were not spreading the illness. So I, I hope that reassures the Honourable Member, but I, I can't make any guarantees uh, that there will be no further cases from those that are in quarantine at this moment in time. Thank Honourable you. Honourable Member, Mr Robert Shaw. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I approach my question, Mr. President, from the standpoint of, of what might be classed as a public common sense understanding of issues. And I refer to the Chief Minister's earlier comment that we're all learning all the time. And I thoroughly, thoroughly respect that uh, comment. But um, as the members, both myself and, and uh, the, member, the fellow member for Douglas East, Mrs Barber, were very much involved in this from the get-go um, as this matter emerged. It was very clear to us that there was a misunderstanding between the WHO concept of community transmission and the common sense approach that the Alaman people have, that there was uh, transmission within the community by any definition. Now, the reason I press this question to the Chief Minister is that there were clearly communication problems around this and as I've just described and yet the, the Minister for Health and Social Care yesterday said to Isle of Man TV that he would handle the matter exactly the same as he did last time. Can the Chief Minister assure us that there will be lessons learned from the process? Chief Minister. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President, and I, I thank the honourable member for his question. It, it's it's really hard on how we message it and, and the rules we follow. There are there are hundreds of countries, Mr. President, who follow the World Health Organization definition on what community transmission is, and it's clear that it is an infection that you spot and you haven't got a clue where it's come from. That is what hundreds of countries agree. Now, we've tried to be open and, and honest and say, yes, someone did catch it on the island from someone who had... Um, so they caught it on the island, but they caught it from someone who had travelled, who had a travel history. And, yes, semantics can be very key. And, and we're trying to reassure the public, but sometimes you are expected to follow the given criteria of what the rest of the world is, is using. So... Yes, if there is any way um, that we can improve the um, publicity on, on what's happened, of, of course we will look at it, but we are bound by world definitions of, and the World Health Organization seems a pretty good one to go by because it seems to be universally recognized. But anything that we can do without giving away personal information, the data, etc., then of course we will look to try and you're always looking to improve yourself. Thank you, Mr. President. Supplementary, Mrs. Lord Brennan. Thank you, Mr. President. Just picking up on the approach to um, publish positive COVID test results once contact tracing has been completed, um, could the Chief Minister comment on a scenario perhaps where there was maybe a large scale event or, or, or several events where there had been people um, phoning into 111? Would he be happy if the there was a, a, a lag of publishing any test results of um, you know, a, a few days, a week. 
what are the boundaries of acceptability of contact tracing before positive results are released to the community? Um, and secondly, um, will the Chief Minister publish the protocol, the protocol including timings, and when I say protocol, I mean in relation to testing, contact tracing, and also any communications around that so we can all understand what it is the officers are working to and indeed if it does need to be improved. Thank you, Mr President. Chief Minister, to reply. Thank you, Mr. President. S sadly, COVID doesn't strike at, a, at a, an agreed time to make it easy for you to get a press release together to, to, let the inf to get the information out to the public. Now, there's never been, I think the Honourable Member says, weeks or, or days. That's never been the case. Maybe a, a day or a day at, at, at best, whilst officers have got the right information. Now, obviously, the minute we're informed of a case, or when I say we, the, the, the team in, con in, in the um, COVID-111, they automatically contact the person and speak to them straight away. Who have you spoken to? Now, I'm sure if it became apparent that they'd just been to a massive event where maybe 500 people had been, then that would cause significant concerns and that would be reported straight away. We, we are advised the seriousness of the situation, whether it's high, how many high risks there are, etc. But it, it really is, we, we have to trust the officers. And, and yes, there is an element of trust, but there's trust in everything that we do as politicians. We have to trust them, they, those who are experienced in this, to get it right, to advise us and, and to get the press releases out the, the minute we can, Mr President. And all I can say is that, from my humble point of view, I think they've done a damn good job so far. I'm more than happy um, to, to share if there are any clearer rules that they, they have to follow on, on this. Um, but we really do put our trust in them to let us know and get the press releases as soon as possible. Once we know we have the right information, because it would be foolish to go out when you don't know the full story. So there's a balance of getting the full story right before we go out and getting it out as soon as possible to advise the public. Thank you, Mr. President. Supplementary message. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm beginning to wonder what's happened to Manx Solutions for Manx Problems, which we heard an awful lot. Um, but I'd like to ask the Chief Minister again, because he didn't answer my questions at, at first time round. Were all the people traced, tested? And I'd like to also have the answer with regards to resources. Was there adequate resources for chemicals and testing equipment on Ireland when this cluster was found? And um, one, one further question uh, for the Chief Minister. Who is the medical lead of the contact tracing? Is it somebody medical or is it a civil servant leading the contact tracing team? Thank you, Mr President. Chief Minister. Thank you, um, Mr. I'm really disappointed with the Honourable Member for saying you know, that we've steered away from Manx um, solutions to Manx problems. We, we are doing our best for what presents itself on the island. And I would remind the Honourable Member that whilst it's far from perfect, we are over five months without a mass outbreak on the, on the island. So I think all the teams involved are doing an excellent job. Um, resources, I'm not aware of any shortage, but I don't get involved in that side of thing. If the Honourable Member wants to provide me with evidence other than hearsay, I'm more than happy to um, take that on board and, and have a, a discussion with the Minister for Health and, and, and Social Care on that. Yes, everyone that the team decided was a high risk was offered a test. We cannot force them to take a test, Mr President, but we can make them quarantine for 14 days. And um, I, I, I will circulate, if, if I can, the, the names of all the um, people involved from the top down. Thank you. Honourable Member, Mrs Barber. Thank you, Mr President. Um, would the Chief Minister agree with me that the community transmission is defined by the WHO is primarily for statistical analysis and actually there are better choices of wording when talking with the public and initially the choice of words in the press release on reflection did cause confusion and speculation yeah. and then secondly I'd just like to ask where are high risk contact tests negative do we undertake any second test at a further point during their isolation to better understand the actual spread and prevalence of asymptomatic but positive positive COVID-19 cases. Chief Minister. Thank you, Mr President. Um, as, as I've said, we, um, we, we do not test after um, the, the first test for high risk, obviously, unless they um, have symptoms, because they are told to quarantine for 14 days, and therefore, at the end of that 14-day period, I think there's a 99% um, that 
that's it. They, they, they cannot infect. So, no, we, we don't. I don't think anyone else does, to, to, to my knowledge. Um, however, as the Honourable Member is a member for the Department of Health and Social Care, that's something I'm sure they can discuss with their minister and, and team who are dealing with, 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 with this. So, um, they might have more information than, than, than me. Um, the first point on communication. As I say, yes, we are learning all the time, Mr. President. I don't think we've, got, we've done a bad job, but if there are ways of improving, then of course, if we can get the messaging out um, any better, then of course we will. Thank you. Now, I have a growing list of supplementary questions, and we are, haven't even started the main question paper. But this, any further questions will be short, and the answers will be short. Mr. Hooper. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. It really is to pick up on the question Ms. Barber uh, just asked. In, in terms of we now have whole household isolation for people that return, uh, the <coughs> Chief Minister in his earlier remarks mentioned that, uh, it, that those who are self-isolating may go on to develop symptoms uh, further on down the line. Uh, but he's just said actually that we're not testing that. So is, is there a risk that people could be coming home uh, possibly asymptomatic spreading the disease whilst they're at home, but perhaps, you know, day 10, 11, and then actually you're letting people that have potentially been exposed to the virus back out into the community without undertaking a full 14-day isolation themselves. So really, it's, it's just a follow-on from Ms. Barber's question. Are there any plans to roll out more household testing on the island? Chief Minister. Thank you, Mr. President. And I, I thank the Honourable Member for his, for his point, because it's, it's, it, it, it it's all based on mathematical risk, I suppose, Mr. President. Our experts feel there isn't a need to test everyone in the household after someone has come, uh, been declared to have COVID-19 or they've been asked to quarantine for 14 days. It's based on risk. Um, they feel that the 14 days catches the vast majority. If, obviously, I will ask them to review that position, but it, it's something that at this moment in time I don't know of any plans to change. But I will ask them to review it. Honourable Member, Mr Ashford. Thank you, Mr President. Uh, would the Chief Minister agree with me that if he watched my interview yesterday, that the, in relation to me saying we'd do things exactly the same, it was, it was referring to the actual release of information? Because would the Chief Minister agree with me that it is important that we have the full information before we go out to the public? And in fact, the full information, including around high risk contacts, only came back at one between noon and 1 pm on the Thursday. Hence why we made the announcement at the Thursday press briefing. And would the Chief Minister agree with me? that in relation to resources, there was adequate resources to test all high-risk contacts. It is correct that in one particular reagent, the department was running low of, but we source reagents from multiple sources, not just one, Mr President. Chief Minister. Thank you, Mr. Mr. President. I sincerely apologise to the Honourable Member. I didn't watch his, 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 his brief. I'm sure it was, I'm sure it was very interesting, um, as always. Um, that, that said, joking apart, um, I, I do accept. <laughs> that said, I do accept that um, we have to wait until the full information comes out. We, we cannot go rushing in into this. I, I accept the points that he's made. It is very important <coughs> that we get it right. It, it's disappointing that honourable members feel that because we didn't confirm the minute someone posted on Facebook that it was out there, that we didn't come out with the detail. We didn't have the detail. If individuals wish to do postings irresponsibly when they don't know the full facts, I can't stop them. But people seem to think, including some honourable members in this court, that it's gospel, that it's the truth about what they see. We need to make sure that the research is done properly by our team before we let the public know what is actually going on. Otherwise, we'd fall into the same trap of all these keyboard warriors that seem to think they have the truth when, when clearly they don't. Thank you. Honourable Member, Ms August Hanson. Thank you, Mr President. Uh, would the Chief Minister agree that um, it might be worth the comms team having a look at pulling together a list of COVID-19 terms or buzzwords um, that are perhaps, um, you know, as an explainer for the public and also for members, um, it might be helpful in ensuring that there's no confusion on terminology in the future? Thank you, Mr President. Chief Minister to reply. Thank you, Mr. President. I've already committed to review, and I'm more than happy to ask the team to look at terms, close words, etc. But I, I, I really think I must stand up and defend our team. I, I think our, our 
PR people and our contact tracing people are doing an excellent job and, and I'm proud of them and what, what they do on behalf of the people of the Isle of Man so I think they're doing a good job we're never going to get it all perfect and, and we should always strive to improve but let's not forget they are doing a blasted good job thank you final supplementary question honourable member uh, Mrs Corlett thank you Mr President <clears throat> Would the Chief Minister agree with me that differing opinion over terminology or definitions is unhelpful to the public and that clear, concise, consistent information is needed so that we all understand the situation and can take any necessary precautions needed in order to keep ourselves and others safe? Mm -hmm. Minister. I, I th I thank, thank you, Mr President. And, um, yes, I, I, I agree with the Honourable Member for Douglas Central. Anything that we can do to get clear messaging out is incredibly important. Yeah. We're learning all the time. If we can improve, we will. I don't think a bad job has been done in the circumstances. When you consider when we got the information, at the last minute we got it, I think at lunchtime on Thursday, within a couple of hours it was being broadcast to the people of the Isle of Man. I think that's a quick turnaround. But we have to be confident of what we're telling the people. That's why there can be sometimes a lag of, of, of a day. Thank you. Please like and subscribe to the Isle of Man TV channel. Thank you.